Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss a new topic, object oriented design. It is very very important for your exam also. In the previous lecture we have covered a very important topic that is swing. I have just discussed about the how to implement a swing program by using J button, J text field. I have also discussed the layout manager which is very very important. Uh, uh, to implement a graphic graphical user interface. So, that topic uh, we are already covered, but today uh, I, I will discuss those things. I will discuss about the object class and relationship among object and what are the major and minor elements, abstract class inheritance, those things you already know, but here I will discuss in, uh, in the, uh, with the help of class diagram, which is very, very important. So, before that, uh, uh, go into details, please follow the previous lecture so that you can get the idea uh, what does mean the inheritance. For example, here I will discuss relationship among objects. So, that basically comes into inheritance and when you talk, I will also talk about the uh, abstraction, uh, I will talk about abstract class inheritance. Uh, aggregation links that is called associations and relationship among the classes and association aggregation using instantaneous meta class grouping construct those thing i will cover in the uh, subsequent lecture so uh, in in this lecture just i will uh, explain what is object oriented programming or object oriented design and what is the implementation details are included in our object oriented design. I will also discuss object class relationship among object that means, I will cover the inheritance uh, encapsulation with the help of class diagram and I will also discuss about the major and minor element of um, object oriented design. So, let us start with the definition of object oriented design. What does mean actually object oriented design? Actually object oriented design includes the conceptual model and implementation. So, whatever the conceptual model that should be model implementation which is created at the time of object oriented analysis. So, object oriented design includes conceptual model implementation please keep that in mind conceptual model implementation which is created at the time of object oriented analysis. So, those things already created at the time of object oriented analysis and object oriented design concept is in the analysis model where the technology independent and will be mapped into uh, onto implementing classes constraint will be identified and interfaces will be designed. So, this will lead to a model for solution domain that is full explanation of how the system should be built on concrete technology. Now, come to the uh, definition of class diagram because all those things I am going to design with the help of class diagram. Uh, in case of software engineering, a class diagram is a UML, uh, is a type of static structure diagram that describes the structure of a system by showing the system classes, their attributes, operation or we can say methods and relationship among the object. So, that is called class diagram. So, class diagram basically a static diagram and represents a static view of an application. And Class diagram is not only used for visualizing, describing on document, uh, documenting different aspect of a system, but also for constructing executable code of the software application. And basically the class diagram describe the attributes and operation of a class and also constraint impose on this system, right. So, the goal of object oriented design is to design the classes identify during the analysis phase and user interface. So, during this phase object oriented design phase uh, we identify and define the additional object 
and classes that support the implementation of the requirement. For example, uh, during the design phase, you might need to add an object for user interface to the system. For example, data entry window, you want to add, browser into, if you want to add. So, that kind of implementation has to be done in by this design phase. So, let us start with an object and in, ca in case of class diagram, we represent the object by using a rectangular box. First, I will discuss about object and class, object and class. So, what does mean the class? Actually, uh, a class describes a collection of similar object and it is a template of certain basic characteristics of a set of object are defined. So, a class defines the basic attributes and operation of the object of that type. So, defining a class does not mean define an object, but only create a template. So, for object to be actually created, instance of the class to be created as per requirement of the cases. So, and we know that object is a, object is a instance of a class. So, we can think object is a concept abstraction or things which creeps the boundaries and meanings for the problem. And uh, an object has the following main characteristics. Uh, we have a unique identification. set of attributes, set of attributes set of state and set of operation. That in we can say it behavior. So, what are the characteristics of, the, of this object is very, very important. Uh, first, unique identification. What does mean? We mean that every object has a unique name by which it can be identified in the system. And set of attributes, we mean every object has a set of properties in which we are interested in. And set of state means, set of state means the value of uh, attributes of an object constitute the state of the object. So, every object will have the number of state, but a given time it can be one of those state. So, and set of operation means behavior. So, we, uh, we mean externally visible action of an object can perform, when an operation is performed. And the state of an object may be changed during the execution. So, this is very, very important. So, those basic or main characteristics of a object is very important. So, so far we have discussed what is class and what is object. You already know what is object. Object is an instance of a particular uh, class. Okay. So, first if I want to declare a object or class, class. So, how do I declare by using class diagram? So, I have, I have already mentioned that in earlier. So, class diagram is a static representation. So, we will represent a class. For example, I am just discussing in our library management system where so many members are present. So, one of the class may be a member. Okay. So, we will write the name of the class within this box. So, member is a class and we know that a class is consist of set of attributes and set of functionalities. And so, if I want to declare the set of attributes, even uh, if we consider the in our compared with the our programming language in object oriented programming language, when uh, we talk about the data type, we talk about the access receiver, uh, I talk about the modifier. 
so those are the important thing that if i want to represent with the help of class diagram so that you can get the idea whether the uh, uh, what is the data type of a particular object uh, what, what what is the access specifier of an attribute uh, what, what is the uh, data type of an attribute what is the access specifier of an attribute what is the modifier of an attribute that is very very important so we have a two part one of the part is this is my actually first class name then this portion is used for data member data member so what are the member are available so data member it may be uh, data type it and we will use the access specifier and modifier or constant here and this part the last part is used for member function member function okay so whenever we want to declare by using class diagram first rectangle will be used as a class name and second rectangle will be used as a data member and third rectangle will be used as a member function member function means function or you can say method that has been used in our object oriented programming so suppose uh, if i want to talk about the data type so what are the data type actually data type so we know the primitive data type so primitive data type means it may be int it may be char float double any primitive data type so that should be right here we also know that some classes for example string is also and we will be think as a data type and suppose we have also one of the class so member for example in our library system booking if i want to book a particular book or in case of banking system if i or railway reservation system suppose i want to book a ticket so booking is if one of the class so that may be a, a a data type in our representation so you can write like this booking we have a some class also for example string builder string builder so that will be also treated as a data member so what about the data type that will be treated as a data member and instance of a class also treated as a data member so you know the class is consist of a set of attributes and the behavior we can say the member function or set of operation the functionality that are associated with this member okay so here member is a class and for example these are the data type and we have to talk about the access specifier so we know that there are four type of access specifier are available in our object oriented programming uh, in case of java we already know that public so let me write one by one so access specifier that is very very important because with the help of this access specifier we can understand about the encapsulation how to hide the data uh, okay so access specifier is very very important so first one is public so when we think uh, any data type is a public or any function is a public so we will use the plus symbol okay plus symbol in front the in front of data type so that is public and minus symbol is used for private private and we use the hash symbol for protected and use this symbol for for package or you can say default access specifier and we know some modifier also let me write some modifier or you can say constant so for example we know that static is a modifier and if i use read only we can use read only and it will be treated as a static we can think as a stat, uh, constant okay and unique 
is a modifier and sometimes we will use the array uh, for modifier ok. So, these are the basic things whenever we declare a class with the help of class diagram the this is the uh, this area will be represent for data type this area will be represent for function or methods and we will use the access specifier and modifier ok. So, let us see an example so that you can get the idea what does it mean. So, suppose we have this member function ok. So, name of the class is member and if I want to represent one of the attribute. So, let me write one by one suppose this is my class. So, name of the class is member ok no problem. Now, I want to represent uh, one of the attribute we already know for example, name. So, name what is the data type that is string. So, name name of the attribute name of the data type I will write suppose I want to the apply the access specifier. Suppose this access specifier is for example, uh, let me use the private. So, I will use minus if I want to make it public we can use the plus symbol if I want to uh, protect it we can use the hash symbol if I want to uh, package symbol we can also use according to access specifier. We already know that of what has been the public protected private and default access specifier. Public means that that met that um, uh, attribute can be accessed from anywhere we can access this in case of private just only access in that class and subclass of that class and in case of protected that class and subclass also and default access provider means within this package we can access we already know that. So, here how to represent first we have to give the access specifier whether with a public protected or private or package. So, according to symbol this first one then name of the attribute ok. So, we can think as a entity of a class diagram. So, here the name of the entity is member. So, this is the class name and this is attribute name ok. Name is the attribute name then colon then string. String is a data type. We have already discussed that there are some several data type are available. So, you can you can use any any any, any kind of data type ok no problem. So, string. So, let me take another example for example, email. So, you can write like this email and it is also a string and suppose I want each of the email must be unique. So, we have a another modifier that is called unique. So, unique is a modifier we can use here also because I want each of the email must be unique. So, we can write here within a curly braces. So, that is unique and if I want to make it private. So, we can use the subtract symbol ok and the next one is for example, address and suppose that I want uh, address from a class. So, we can write the address as a class. So, we separately we have to write the class. So, address is the instance of a address class. So, you can like write like this. And suppose you want to make it string also no problem. So, according to your requirement you can do that ok. And uh, suppose I want to give some date of a starting date of a member that uh, when the uh, he start uh, the membership of this library. So, I will use the start date and end date. So, let us start with a simple uh, attribute that is start date start date. So, for example, the type of the date is from date type ok. So, uh, how many number I want to count? So, member count, member count, count for example, member count is integer ok. And what suppose I want to make the uh, member count uh, attribute as a static attribute. So, if I want to use the static attribute we have to underline this attribute ok. So, if I want to use the static modifier we have to underline this attribute. So, this is all about this my member class of a library function. We can add so many 
attribute so one thing we have to remember that whenever we are going to add an attribute first we have to give the name of the attribute whatever the name it may be name email address phone number whatever it is all details will be treated as an attribute and after that colon then we have to give the data type okay here for example i have used string string it may be date it may be integer so what kind of data type you are going to use that is very important so from this diagram we can understand how to use the access specifier suppose you want to make the access specifier uh, for example uh, if i want to make this for example if i want to make this name is public so i will use a plus symbol suppose this member i want to use as a uh, email i i want this member as a protected so you can use this suppose i address is a package specifier so we can use this negation symbol also so how to use the data type how to use the booking okay uh, data type how to use the member that is very very important okay and suppose i want to uh, use a, as a, any of the member as a static then we can just only underline this entity uh, and, and underline this uh, attribute so that means only one copy of our class will be accessed you already know what does mean the static and suppose i want to now come to the second part because there is two part one of the part i have just just uh, completed i have completed the data member so how to draw the data member that i have already covered and now to the next one is member function so how to write a member function how to write a member function and we have a also constructor in case of class we have seen that we have a constructor suppose i want to uh, create a constructor for this class so we know that constructor name must be same with the class name so what is the my class name my class name is member so i can write the constructor name member okay and we know that constructor uh, it may be a no argument constructor it may be a parameterized constructor so if i want to pass any constructor uh, any argument to an constructor we can write like this for example in this example just i have just write uh, for as n then colon this is my uh, uh, entity and the type is string for example okay and second one is for example then comma second one is for example email so i can write email email i am just writing short email and that is also a string okay if you want to make unique you can write here no problem whatever the attributes uh, what are the data type you can write just after the clone symbol and for example third one i want to pass the date date for example so if i want to pass the date we can write like this so i will uh, for example starting date i am just make it sd for simple and the data type is date here i want to say that whenever we are going to use as a mem uh, constructor just the name of the class and constructor name must be same and if i want to pass the any parameter we will write like this the whole thing has to be written here okay and suppose the constructor is public because co constructor is always public so i will put the plus symbol in front of name of the constructor so in this way you can declare the constructor okay next is if i want to declare so if i want to declare a method for example i want to declare a method show details <coughs> sorry show details this is by method name okay i want to make the method is public so i will put the plus symbol in front of method name and how do i know suppose i want to pass some uh, argument if i don't want to pass any argument we just simply write this one but after that clone we, we have to write the return type that is for example here the return type is void so whenever we are going to define a function or functionality of a class so we will write the return type so here in this case name of the function then symbol bracket symbol then colon then return type that is important suppose i want another member another member function for example get member count get member count 
so this is my name of the function and after this function if i want to return type is integer i will write like this okay so suppose i want some you can write any other you can write change email for example if, if you want to use a function that is called change email email so this is my name of the function after that if i want to pass any parameter any parameter just like the previous one when i declare the constructor for example i have just pass any other data type so that is name of the attribute is new ml and it is for example string and suppose this function return a boolean value so we can write boolean yes or no so this is my return type okay and this is my parameter and this is my name of the attribute so in this way we can represent a member so uh, what i have discussed about uh, whenever we are going to declare a class diagram so if i want to declare the access specifier we use those symbol we use the plus we use the minus we has and negation symbol and if i want to declare a method that part would be for declare a member function and that part will be declare a data type so that means that part that rectangle part is for data type data member and that is for data function okay or we can say member function or process a uh, uh, method okay in case of java we call it method and this is the name of the class this is the name of the class okay so here in this example we have just covered how to represent the class name how to represent the access specifier how to represent the modifier uh, modifier and how to represent a constructor also so this is a constructor one of the example that is is constructor okay this is constructor so constructor name must be same with the class name you already know if i want to pass any argument uh, uh, into a constructor so we will just pass the name of the uh, uh, attribute and then data type of this attribute this is very simple and after that you will use the comma okay similarly in case of method if i want to pass any argument so we will pass it as it is in more than one argument i will use the comma so that is the representation of of a class okay here uh, if i in this example you know that in, in encapsulation encapsulation we always try to hide the attributes okay from this outside so if i in case of that there, there is a train you can see that uh, all the methods are public but if i make all the methods uh, all the data type are for example if i want to make all the data type all the data types are make it black so all the data type is protected if all the data type is protected and all the member function all the member function are public all the member data type is protected and all the member fun sorry all the member uh, data type are private and all the member function is public so that kind of representation is called encapsulation that kind of representation of a class called encapsulation right we know the definition of encapsulation so if i want to um, uh, try encapsulation i if i want to make a encapsulation in our design so we can use in this way we will use all the member data uh, all the data types are all the data types or uh, all the attribute all the attribute make it private and all the data member will make it public so that type of representation is called encapsulation so in this lecture we have just discussed about uh, what is object oriented design and what how to represent a object oriented design with the help of uml diagram I here i am just discuss about the class diagram so how to represent the data type or in a class diagram and how to represent the member of a class diagram so and how to pass an argument how to use the modifier for example static uh, read only or if you use the constant only just we can think and uh, unique uh, array operator we can use um, later that how to use for example if i want to add a array operator for example if i write like 
visitor number of visitor if i want to count v i s a t o r visitor and the data type is string and if i want that string uh, array will contain one take only three so that three if i want to take the multiple number of uh, size then it will it will, I, it will uh, this star inside this bracket okay so and if i want all the data must be unique so we can write like this okay so and in this lecture we have just covered how to represent the class name data member and uh, um, member function and next lecture i will discuss about the inheritance i have also discussed here how to represent the encapsulation and next lecture i will discuss about the inheritance how to represent the relationship between the classes i will discuss in my next lecture